Welcome to Behind the Screen, like 29, I think. Uh, we're continuing work on the Labyrinth of Gears. Uh, I started it last week. I got most. I got the uh, like basic room descriptions, basic room ideas down. Started working on traps. I've got three simple traps left and five complex traps to figure out. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. I should be able to get all those done within the you know, two, uh, two and a half hours that I have today. Um, if I get those done, I'll be working out uh, monster placement. That's the one. And, and, and like, monster group sizes. I have briefly had a thought about things like this already. Just because it's how I work, I can't not. I tried not to, but I just couldn't not do it. Um, so we'll see how well that goes. Uh, but first, as ever, the recap. So, previously on Dungeons and Dragons: Waking of the Gods, uh, as I mentioned, the player characters haven't really been doing much in terms of plot progression, but they've been doing a lot of uh, kind of character development, actually gelling as a team after two years real time, two months in game time, and kind of setting up their future stuff. Like Bernie Storm Chase has found a workshop that he can use for a small fee. Um, things like that. So I've a lot I've please do apologize. Please do I beg pardon. Uh I've said that the players can level up when they leave Star Spy because of all the character development they were doing, and I wanted to reward that. Uh so last session, if you recall. Uh, we were starting with Apollo being drunk on rubbing alcohol and it continued from there uh, He, uh, they got his the journal he had bought translated from Celestial to Common, they got the whole thing translated it took two days for the scholars that they spoke to um, I do need to tell the player what information was contained in that and uh, Erwin got some information on Tempest that he asked for and it was basically just kind of hanging out, more character development, um, getting to know each other. And then uh, Burning Storm Chaser um, went to find teleportation options for them to, to get started by quicker than the like three weeks it take by road to the edge of the forest. And they'd have to travel maybe a week, two weeks to get to Starspire. And then another two weeks from Star Spy to the Bright Cliffs, where the ultimate destination is. Uh, Corvo went to do the same thing, but he went to see if there was any work for them uh, in the Star Spy forest that the, the serial, their you know, point of contact, would be able to offer them at, uh, in return for kind of waiving any teleportation fees. And uh, she said, yes, I can give you uh, one trip um, passage for one group. Uh, if you agree to to deliver this letter in, in Star Spy. I dropped some names of major NPCs, but the players didn't pick up on them. So uh, no, that was by the by. Uh, and so they kind of all met up, had this discussion about whether they we're going to wait the two days for the information to come through or whether they we're going to go because Storm, Bernie Stormchaser's mind is slowly unraveling. They decided to wait. Uh, the next day, uh, Bernie Stormchaser heard this female voice in his mind just kind of repeating a mantra over and over again and it calmed the the pain and the tempestuousness of his key to the point where he was functionally normal for the day. Uh, normal as in his established behaviour. And then the next day that wasn't there and uh, his key went completely out of control and essentially just shattered his sense of self and his identity um, because the player pretty much just like almost well the margin of failure on the on the wisdom saving throw was, was horrendous so it was kind of uh, the player has opted that they can no longer attempt that saving throw like burning storm chaser is, is uh in any other game probably would now be a, a gm pc but but because it is player character uh i'm perfectly happy for for the player to to retain control of burning storm chaser for now uh, but luckily, the information came through, as I say, from from the from the scholars that they spoke to, 
Um, oh, there was also the reveal that Apollo has uh, allies who work for his patron in the city. Uh, nothing more came of that. Oh, nothing has come of that yet. And so they got to the teleportation circle. Corvo realized that, well, yes, he had free passage for one group. It would technically take two, tri two trips for everyone to get through the teleportation circle. And then they realized they could shove the halfling, uh, Marius, the halfling rogue, into a bag of holding because it wouldn't. There's 10 minutes of air in a bag of holding for anyone who is unaware. Um, and it takes six seconds to cast teleportation circle. So there was enough air for him in the bag to just shove him in the bag to save the cost of an extra trip. Um, but in a storm chaser stumbling through to the teleportation circle said take us to Starspire and the guy, the, the wizard who um, was casting the spell kind of needed some more information. Starspire forest is big so it was like do you mean the city of Starspire? Uh, sorry, take them to the forest. That's what Burn Storm Chaser said. Uh, and so Walter, the, the wizard, he said, do you mean Starspire Forest? In which case, do you want to go to Starspire? Do you want to go to Deephaven? Or do you want to go to Joriel's Roost? Uh, Joriel's Roost is the capital, capital administrative center of the Brightcliffs, handily. Um, and the party decided they'd go straight there and cut out the extra you know, two weeks of travel from Starspire to the Brightcliffs, which has had repercussions on my plans going forwards. I'm not going to lie, it was kind of like the one thing they could have said to find out without specifically asking if there was a teleportation circle there. It was the one thing they could have said to find out that they could teleport to um, Jiriel's Roost. Um, anyway, what was it? Yeah, uh, so, uh, so the, the, the encounters I'd been toying with are kind of scrapped. I've got to rearrange stuff, but that's fine. As I, said, that's, that's, that I hadn't planned anything specifically. It was just kind of ideas about what could happen on the trip to, to preempt players in case they got there too fast and they got there way faster than I expected. Uh, and by too fast, I mean, they got kind of going on the journey before I'd had time to think of anything to occur. But because of the way I plan things, I can just slot them into other journeys in the forest. Um, so that's fine. And they kind of, they stepped through the, the, the portal into Uriel's Roost and were kind of confronted with just kind of exactly what it means to be in an elven city as opposed to Scour. And that was the point at which we A, ended the session, and B, Corvo's player realized that he had a job in Stars by the City and they were two weeks away by foot. So I'm sure that won't come back to bite them in the ass if they don't do it. So, the recap. Let us see how to... Uh, the party... I guess it would be just... Uh, spent time preparing f for their journey whilst burning storm chaser struggled struggled with uh, his, his chaotic key chaotic key uh, before traveling to the star spire forest. So there's your recap. Uh, I will update the campaign journal, get that okay by my players, and then hopefully at some point share it with you guys. But that is by the by. I just realized I'm so professional, I don't have the PDFs open that I was consulting. God damn it, you idiot. Uh, there we go, there we go. Uh, fifth at DD. D &D. Nope. Uh, lazy DM. Now fifth at DD, and then so I've got the those open if I need them. Uh, where's the random tables chapter? I say chapter, this is a 55 page booklet. Ah, 
Interesting. Very interesting. Pre-gen layers, I completely forgot that I had. Well, that might be useful to, to remember in the future when I'm doing one shots and stuff. Like, I need a quick, I need a map. Where have I got one? Actually, that would have been useful yesterday. Never mind. Anyway, uh, random tables, there we go. Random traps. I specifically more want damage severity by level and trap save DC and attack bonuses. And then this book also has the maths that I'll need to figure out things. Pretty good. Pretty good. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got traps to finish working on. So, there we go. Random traps page. I can see it all on the one page. Grab my dice. Just in case I need them. Put my ring back on. I guess I forgot to do that. Right. Traps. Excellent. So, calm voice. Focus on the task at hand. What was my plan for the gauntlet then? Three cavern gauntlet. One with two simple traps, one with one complex, one simple. Oh, two simple traps, complex trap, simple and complex trap. Okay, I should probably label these. So this would actually be the gauntlet three. No. Missing a simple trap. Excellent. Starting off strong. Right, uh, let's just copy paste this. The Gauntlet 3. Why is that registering as a title and that isn't? Anyway, that's a problem for future usage. Uh, okay, so I need to generate trap type, flavor, and trigger. Scythes, diseased. Bound prison. Actually, that works. That works. I can make that work in terms of a cobalt trap. Turn off the underline. Turn off that. Uh, scythes. Scythes, diseased. Bound prisoner. Anyway, so, uh, first trap, lightning shuriken, etc. How have I been? Yes, uh, a lever stands next to a locked door. Pulling the lever causes a row of holes in the walls on either side to open. Um, missing a wave of electrified projectiles. Okay, so that's that. Uh, creatures, not just not specifying characters, creatures within, uh, we say, 10 feet of the door when the lever is pulled. I say may attempt, because if they don't, they'll just get automatically hit. Attempt a DC 13 
dexterity saving throw. Taking uh, Shuriken, I think it does d4 damage. Uh, 44. Piercing damage. Uh, so that's the shuriken, and then like the sparks of electricity dancing between each shuriken. So, and 2d6 lightning damage on a failed save, and taking half damage on a successful save. The shurikens, uh, the projectiles even. Um, the projectiles are released at initiative 20. I, um, once every six seconds. Until the lever is reset. At least initiative 20 every turn. There we go. Every round even. Until the lever is reset. I replace locked with shuttered just so that there's less confusion when I describe, when I put this all together into the room. Uh, so how would you open the door without the lever? It's cobalt, so it's got to easily reset. Um, oh, well, the door would just be a false thing. There'd be, like, there's no way of opening it. There'll be a hole in the wall next to it. Uh, a... DC 15 investigation check reveals a small uh, tunnel in the wall nearby, hidden uh, behind a pile of rusty metal. Of oh, scrap metal, there we go. That's that one. Uh, I believe this, this is the same room. Yes, two simple traps in the first room. So this would be when you enter the room, you trigger the trap. Uh, so we'll call this. Dragon Fear Blades. So this is um, narrow trip wire stretches across the entrance of this chamber. When broken, a series of dagger blades swing from the ceiling towards the doorway uh, any character in the doorway may attempt to because again the kobolds are not particularly competent traps that's supposed to be very difficult. The difficult problem will be the um, boss fight at the end. I attempt a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Taking 2d6 slashing damage. And becoming frightened of the first creature they see for one hour. Uh, 
on a failed save and only taking half damage on a success. I think that would work. Be some interesting roleplay. Perhaps. Who knows? I certainly don't. Anyway. Uh, so, that's that done. One last simple, two simple traps. The one in the gauntlet and the one in the dragon skull room. And then, why did I put five complex traps in this dungeon? Oh yeah, because there's not many monsters in it, that's why. Bound, you fool. Okay, so. Uh, Withering touch. Hmm. A shape is slumped against one wall of this chamber. Touching it triggers the pressure plate it is resting on. Closing a seri seri series of um, narrow blades to swing from the wall. From the wall. I don't know why. From the wall nearby. Uh, a DC. This is sort of hidden. So, slightly high DC, investigation check reveals the presence of the pressure plate. Another reveals, t classic typo, presence of the blades. Any character within, any character, any creature, stop doing that you fool, creature within five feet of the pressure plate. I attempt a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, etc., etc. comma, taking 26 slashing damage. Failed set on the failure and half damage on a success. I'm trying to think of traps where succeeding would make things worse, like at the back of my mind while I'm doing this. Any creature which fails the saving throw is ravaged by a virulent. No, um, it's unable to regain hit points until, uh, how to word this? Oh, um, before the end of the next long rest as a virulent disease ravages the system. So if the disease is cured, uh, if the disease is cured, they may regain hit points as usual. So not in any, not in any danger from the disease, but it weakens them. I'm also not going to proofread this on stream, as that seems pointless. Um, so, uh, hopefully you weren't expecting that. So, if you were, I'm terribly sorry to disappoint, I guess. 
Uh, protection of the gods. Sleep-inducing hammers. Well, the obvious one is it bonks you on the head. Done. Next. Moving on. I don't think I don't think that's the uh, that's the the solution. So. Oh, music. Hammers on a drum. Uh, do, 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 do. The dragon skull in the middle of this chamber rests on a podium surrounded by many thin wires. Any player, pro any player, any creature, like the actual player, literally in the game, uh, any creature approaching. So I can't actually see the, most of the keyboard because of where the mic is, which is why a lot of the typos happen, I realized. I don't have the benefit of my peripheral vision at one second. So rather, sorry about that even, uh, where was I? Yes. Uh, any creature approaching the pedestal uh, must attempt a DC 15 uh, oh, that's the wrong way around acrobatics dexterity there we go I think that's the, the way around it. it's phrased in all the adventures and stuff. Acrobatics, you idiot. Plural. Yes, your finest acrobatic, please. Uh, DC 15, acrobatics dex dexterity check. Uh, on a failure, they trigger the trap. Uh, what's triggered? Series of hammers hidden within the walls. Walls uh, begin beating crude drums disguised as all decorations and all. Creatures which can hear um, the drums must attempt a C15 wisdom saving throw. It's not how you spell throw. Uh, uh, yeah, falling asleep. For one D four hours on a failure. Characters which are asleep um, may only wake upon taking damage or by, um, I guess, just waiting out the time period. Probably phrase that better in the final draft, but there we go, that's what we've got for now. So kind of the idea then would be that the kobolds would discover adventurers, drag them away, steal their stuff, probably just throw them out of the out of the dungeon. But it depends if there are any kobolds left by by this point, after players do what players do best, 
they break everything. So, five complex traps. Five complex traps. So, I, where do I need them? I need... I think the first one was in the gauntlet. Sorry, in the gauntlet. Yeah, so I want gauntlet 2 and gauntlet 3. Might as well just do this. Gauntlet 2, the gauntlet 3, and then we've got where's it, the or the orrery. I think they were the first complex traps, so I should probably check before making assumptions. Uh trapped sing simple. Trapped simple. Creepy. Uh, trapped simple. Trapped simple. Trapped simple. If I haven't specified, if I've just put trapped, then it's a simple trap. Trapped simple. One complex. Two complex. So that's going to two and three. That's a simple trap. That's the hammers. Oh, book table. Sorry. Uh, Communication orrery. Oh, and then the Lincoln Corridors too. Yeah, cool. Uh, protection of the gods. Rest on a work table. Communication orrery, and then... Thinking corridor has two complex traps. Just want to check something while I'm thinking about it. Uh, where was it? Can't remember what I was going to check now. Boy, how is that annoying? Right. Uh, so let's check the official. Kind of information on complex traps. I do not know why I pronounced it that way. I do apologize. Uh, tool sleeping spells, encounter building, random encounters. Ah, traps revisited. There we go. Complex traps. So the corridor with two in, they're probably going to be quite simple complex traps, but they are still going to be complex traps. Hmm. The official guidelines are not terribly informative. Sphere of crushing doom. It's a boulder. So I'm going to start quite simple in the gauntlet, and then these two I've just decided probably going to be more complicated. So let's generate some Trap characteristics, shall we? That's the wrong window. Trap characteristics. I need five. I... You know what? Rather than just rolling 2d20 and then re-rolling one, I'm just going to get grab the uh, no, third d20. Oh, wait. One second.
Right, let's try this again, shall we? So, this is more shuriken. Sleep inducing shuriken steep stair. Does that fit with what I've got established? No, it does not. Sleep inducing nets, idle on pedestal. Could that work? I think it could. I think I can make this work. So, swoop. Sleep inducing nets. Idle on pedestal. Blinding whips floor plate. That just sounds like a fun night in. Or not. Up to you, really. With these, I'm more tempted to just I'm less attached to um, the three randomly generated results I mean I haven't been before but these I'm even less attached to weakening glyphs goblet on pedestal like the triggers I'll probably just use the triggers I want to use for these rather than anything else. Stunning bowlers. Yeah, I got the idol again, so I'll be uh, changing that most almost certainly. And then the fifth core of the fifth complex trap. Eighteen, nine, and six that produces diseased beams chest. Okay, so uh, the one in the gauntlet three probably should sync up with withering touch. So that's so if we have the third. Uh, the third cave of the gauntlet be some kind of like fake treasure hoard maybe with 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 a like a casualty to for the kobolds to 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 kill and steal stuff from and treasure chests to purloin um Two diseases is probably not the best thing to be using, actually. We could use one of the idols, though. Hmm. Oh, the seeping using nets, I could have a lowering ceiling. That is gauntlet two. Have a good old-fashioned spiked ceiling coming down. Hey, Farsky. <laughs> I'm, I am sorry that uh, I made you jump. Yeah, enjoy that emote. Oh. Right, so that's that. God, I'm so tired all of a sudden. What the hell? Oh. So, uh, that's one. Uh, anyway. Uh, probably go with the idol then, or a goblet. Idol, goblet, idol, goblet. Weakening's too close to diseased. Go with the bolus. It's that one. Uh, communication orrery. Ooh. Either the glyphs or the beams. Oh, there won't be glyphs. Because these are these are specifically mechanical traps. I'm happy to use the beams because I can BS my way through that as um, energy siphoning. 
somehow. No, that's going to be magical. I'm going to have the one magical trap. But that will be the Necromancer, not Kobold. Um, oh, yes, I could do... I'll do that. That's a horrible idea. Uh, okay, so those are the, those two traps. So, the glyphs... Um, you have to destroy them to, to stop the magic. But if you're blinded, you can't see where they are. Obviously going to make that into a complex, two complex traps, but there we go. And then so they have to go in the communication orrery, which works for me because that is an orrery. So get rid of this. Uh, I'll type these out and then shove them where relevant. So. Um, or would there be a kobold kind of coming of age ritual first chamber is pull a lever get electrified the lever is a trap entrance to the room has some dragon fairy stuff third chamber is a dragon fake dragon horde with uh, a, a fallen adventurer to, to loot. Could have a maze. Could have a fake maze that one of the party will be able to see over because they're so tall. Well, two of the party are tall enough to see over it. Actually, three of the uh, fur bulk still there. Yeah. I think I can make this work. Um, so this is also a trap that the players could just ignore because they don't have to go through the maze. They could just go around it or break it through. They don't. They don't know they need to find that. They don't need the thing in the maze. Is, is the point? They just have to clear the room. Whereas the kobolds would have to clear, grab the thing, and therefore trigger the trap, uh, potentially trigger the trap um, as part of the coming of age thing. So, kind of, there's more of a narrative thing than a specific problem for the players. So, I'd probably stick with the DC 13 stuff. Um, hidden in the center of the maze, a wooden. Wouldn't be a dragon skull. What am I about? Kobolds. Uh, what would a dragon find interesting? Hmm. Oh, the key. Okay. Uh, a key rests on a pedestal. Uh, DC 13 investigation. That's not how you spell that word. An intelligence check reveals the earth around the base. I realize I could just use control. Yeah. The base. Oh, uh, by which I mean control left and control right to skip to skip through words. In case you didn't know that shortcut. Around the base of the pedestal is disturbed. Um. Removing the key without placing it with something of equal weight. Uh, which itself requires a DC 13. Slide to find dexterity check. This is also going to be quite interesting because uh, most of the forest, I'm going to be using the um, like Tome of Annihilation stuff from Chult to populate it with dinosaurs and that kind of and kind of feel to the area. And then they kind of come in here and it's just all traps and kobolds and nothing like what they've been finding um, nearby. But uh, I've decided the overarching story 
kind of the bit of the scheme that the big bad is perpetrating this area is he is uh, essentially bullying all of the local goblin tribes to join his cause. And so they are, they are, sorry, um, rounding up all of the the dinosaurs from the local uh, like herd grounds and hunting uh, glades and things like that and taking them out of the forest. So the, the, the elves are kind of understandably worried about the large migration of the local of the local fa um, fauna with no real explanation for it because they don't live... Like, they, they stay in their, their cities. It's very um, insular. Uh, partly because of all the dinosaurs being dangerous, partly because the elves want to live in harmony with the forest, and uh, partly because if they came down out of their cities, they'd have to interact with, with everyone that isn't an elf, which is in this world um not something they want to do so i'm gonna have like goblins riding dinosaurs and maybe some birds carrying goblin birds, uh, pterodactyls carrying goblins and things like that it's gonna be cool hopefully it's gonna be something very different to what's come before which was mostly just humans um i will be obviously scaling things to match the player level basic goblin poses almost no threat at this point due to the sheer AC value that the party has. It is annoying. That's what I was going to do uh, for one of these traps. I need to check um, strength of a kobold. Anyway, uh, which itself requires a DC 13 slash fan dexterity check. Uh... Triggers a net to um, snap upwards. So the net's going to be so big that it... Yeah, I don't think they'd have a time to get out of the net. Um, all creatures within five feet of the net are caught and... Um, Suspended. So this is a dwarf. This is where his living quarters. So probably wouldn't. So this seems to be quite high, but not too high because again, it's a dwarf. So we'll say ten feet. Up. Yeah, uh, ten feet above the ground. So that is a simple trap. Now to make it a complex trap. And while some of these will reference uh, initiative scores or like every six seconds, it'll be very much kind of, I might put a timer on the table or just kind of say and the, like when the effect happens as a, a kind of dramatically appropriate intervals. Just to create a sense of tension rather than, oh, we're in initiative now, something's gone wrong. So... This is sleep inducing. Oh. Going back to the idea of when would you not want to succeed on a roll. So, what if this is like a a, a particularly insidious trap where um, if you fail on the roll, you fall asleep, it's fine. And you have to roll, um, like every, every interval. Maybe not every interval, but you, you, you have to do more than one roll anyway. Um, until you succeed. If you, uh, sorry, until you fail. Every time you succeed... You add one to a DC, which the GM makes note of. And then when you complete a long rest, 
You have to make, say... Say it's a poison, but they don't realize the poison. They don't get the poison condition. It's like a stimulant poison. That... The science of it doesn't matter. It's magic. It's it's a fantasy world. Um, but when you finish a long rest, you have you you roll you roll a, a Constitution saving throw. With base DC being thirteen plus the number that you added to it. Um, if you fail, you gain a level. You don't gain the benefits of the long rest. Does that work? I think that works just kind of talking it out. Hmm. I think that works. Right, so. So it's kind of like a delayed action, delayed um, effect trap. So, at initiative 20 every round, or at um, dramatically appropriate intervals. Creatures within the net must attempt a DC, was a 15. No, wait, it's Kerbal Trap. Uh, DC 13, Constitution saving throw. On a failure, the creature falls asleep. Um... On a success, the creature, the creature, there we go, gains a plus one DC to a constitution saving throw, base DC th uh, 13. To be made at the end of that creature's apostrophe creature's next long next long rest. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Creatures failing. This saving throw, uh, this will have to be part of the same sentence. Um, creatures failing this saving throw do not gain the benefits of the long rest, of a long rest. And gain a level of exhaustion as usual. So that should be enough to, to you know, give me the idea of, of what I want it to be. So, one of the three is the withering, to yeah. A, wo a carved wooden idol rests on a pedestal surrounded by piles of scrap metal fashioned into discs. Uh, These probably going to 
come from like the first wave ooh multiple waves that'll make it certainly make it a complex trap Again, uh, why would they? Okay, so what if the idol is what slots into like a panel next to the door, which opens the door? That seems suitably cobaldy. Uh, moving the idol triggers a wave of bolus to spring from. Hiding places throughout the room. Um, immediately make an attack roll with a, you will say, plus six. The plus six bonus against all creatures within five feet of the pedestal. Uh, on a successful, oh, the better of the pedestal, um, this attack is successful. Deals uh, one d eight bludgeoning damage, and the creature must succeed on a DC thirteen Constitution saving throw, or be stunned until. Start of their next turn. Um, at initiative twenty, now say for the next minute, make an attack against all creatures within. Ten feet of a pile of treasure. Uh, in brackets, using the profile above, using the profile above at initiative twenty. Trying to work out the maths here. Um, average party AC is like 18, so uh, 12. Although they do have an annoying number of shield spells between them. But it's against it's for kobolds, and it's going to be that's going to be particularly dangerous against kobolds. So I'm I'm happy with that. I think it is not designed as a player thing. It's designed to as a kobold test. And I'm trying to stick to that narrative for this section of the dungeon. Uh, actually, while I'm thinking about that. So that's Gauntlet 3. Where is my room description? Room 1. What was the trap in room 1? Uh, I believe it was, yes, the Galvanic Gift. And the dragon fair blades, yes. Uh, room one. Exit is through a small tunnel. How they're going to get the larger group party members through is entirely up to them. They'll probably just resort to breaking the door down. The one door has an AC of 10, 25 hit points and a 
damage threshold of ooh, we'll say three for now, but I'll see can I'll try it through play. Uh room two. Uh exit is through a locked door. The key is in the middle of a maze. Room three. The door to exit this room has no keyhole, but is next to a small indentation which requires the wooden idol found elsewhere to be placed into it. Uh, that's that's where the N is missing. There we go. So that sh should tell me everything I need to know, in theory. Uh, so, how do diseased beams work? Diseased beams. Well, the chest to me makes sense to be the. Uh, the word, the word, the word, the words. The words. Um, the orrery. That's the word, not the orrery. Yeah, I guess the orrery. Um, with the, the hidden... Oh, the, the globe at the centre, you open it, and that's where the stuff is that the warlock needs to free the Raven Queen. So that's fine. So that's the chest. So activating that. How would you deactivate that? Put the planets in the correct alignment. There we go. So. Uh, first sentence. Well, you know. Um, a rusty orrery. Oh wait, what have I already said about the communication already before I repeat myself? Large armor to centered around a dwarf height mirror. That is not what I'm going with anymore. Centered around a golden globe representing the sun. There we go. So the other planets are reflective, the sun in the middle is not. Uh, dominates this room. I D C 15. Investigation. Intelligence check. Or a DC 15 wisdom perception check. Perception wisdom check even. No, those are the wrong way around, aren't they? Where's the, where's the character sheet? No, they're the right way around. You put skill and then ability. Uh, DC 15, perception. Wisdom check. Reveals a pair of small hinges on the rear of the golden sun in the center of the orrery. Really, you can't auto-correct it to the... What is even the point of view? Oh yeah, I was going to check that at some point. Sorry, I just realized I have to check something for work. Excellent. Hmm. 
Okay, that's fine. I will keep that page open so I don't forget to reply to it. Anyway, so, uh, concern at the center of the RRE. Opening the globe without aligning planets in the correct fashion. Now, there should be a clue for this. The solution is painted on the ceiling of the engineer's sleeping quarters. And I'll go and add that fact uh, up here. Yeah, first floor, uh, sleeping quarters. Now one has a rotten bed positioned below a painting of the night sky. There we go. Uh, triggers the trap. Once triggered, the doors slam shut and um, is it portcullis, I think it's the plural, but I'm not entirely certain, so bear with me. Larum Webster, will you be my savior today? Pluralize it, please. Please? Pr pretty please? Please, please, can I have a plural? Has an illustration, which is, you know, not great. Okay, I can't be bothered to find the correct one, so I'll just reword the sentence to fix how I want it to to be. Uh, and a portcullis drops in front of each one. Till planets are aligned correctly. Uh, a random planet targets the closest creature uh, bah, bah, with 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 a random effect and then in brackets um, each planet corresponds to uh, a, a beholder's eye stalk roll on the relevant table. In te, in the monster manual. Does that make sense until so until the planets are aligned correctly by solving the puzzle? A random planet targets the closest creature with a random effect. Each planet corresponds to beholders. I stalk roll in the relevant. I missed out the word table, which is you know quite a crucial word there. At table in the monster manual. Uh, at initiative twenty. A random planet targets the closest creature with a random effect. 
I think that gets across what I wanted to say. I will obviously tidy the wording up um, at a later point. Uh, once. Uh, the trap can be reset from the outside if a construct places its faceplate against the door. The trap can be rest? No, the trap can be reset. Uh, I guess we should also do this. Uh, so each uh, once triggered, door slam shut. That uh, was triggered. The, no, the planets won't move by their own, of their own volition. Each planet can be moved ten feet with one action. Assuming a strength score of 15 or higher. Five feet for strength scores above 10. Oh, between 10 and 14, I guess. 10 and 14. Inclusive. Has an armor class of 15. I really need to f uh, go through like an official campaign to figure out how they word things like this, but for now, has an armor class, an AC of 15. Uh, we'll say 15 hit points and a damage threshold of five so lower hit points quite low hit points but you have to do five, more than five damage to actually damage them because of the shape and the m magic within them so that's a puzzle within a trap i like that that seems pretty complex to me And then I uh, should also, I suppose, uh, figure out this last two. So these are two complex traps. Uh, you could, could just combine them into one lot, a big complex trap. No, a more traditional complex trap that has more than one you know, trap aspect to it. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. So the trouble I have is that while I have a large party, so things have to do a lot of damage to threaten them in a way because there's more of them to soak up damage. And then things like disease and poison, um, they can neutralize quite easily at this point. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, the goblin on the pedestal is just going to be a lever, which does open the door at the far end of the room. This long corridor is empty of any distinguishing features bar a lever set into the wall halfway down its length. Okay. 
beg pardon. So that's that. Uh, a pressure plate in the doorway of this room. Triggers a series of. Oh, it works. This will be magical, I think. To 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 be a contrast to everything that's come before. This is kind of like the last line of defense before the prisoner. It's also going to be the most powerful line of defense to stop the key if the Kieran did escape from coming this way. Triggers a series of glyphs carved into the walls for the entire length of the corridor. To pulse with a bright light. Any creature looking at a glyph must succeed on a DC 15 and then randomly capitalize the Theo. Constitution saving throw or be blinded for one minute, one minute. Uh, the glyphs pulse brightly every six seconds. Uh, or pulse brightly at initiative. Tw <laughs> God, I hate typing on stream. It's so stressful. Pulse brightly. Not that anyone's really watching, of course, but there we go. Um, at initiative 20. For the next 10 minutes. Every round, every rund. Every round is initiative 20 for the next 10 minutes. Uh, a creature... and cover their eyes or otherwise gain the blinded condition to negate this effect door at the far end of the room Okay, so if we say it's a 40 foot corridor, far end of the corridor, no, that's too short, um, 80. Door at the far end of the corridor uh, is unlocked by pulling the lever. Triggering the second part of this trap. I realized that I could very easily make this the laser corridor from the Resident Evil movie. I'm not going to, but there we go. Um, another se series of glyphs begins pulsing. With a sickly green glow. Each glyph uh, occupies a five foot area on the floor of the corridor. And each creature stepping on a glyph must attempt a DC 15 constitution saving throw. Uh, or lose one. 
or lose, uh, or take. Oh wait, no. Must succeed. Must attempt to DC 15 Constitution saving throw. Uh, taking 1d10 necrotic damage. 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 Not a failure. And taking half dam damage on a success. I think that's an appropriate damage level. 2d10 is the appropriate. Mm. Probably leave it as is because there'll be eight of them. A creature may attempt a DC 15 uh, acrobatics dexterity check to avoid a glyph. Wait, I'll just check the condition so I'm not making a redundant statement. What is the blinded condition? Yeah, automatically fails any ability check that requires sight. So, um... So voluntarily gain the this check can be attempted by creatures which have voluntarily gained the blinded condition as mentioned above. But uh, any creature doing so has disadvantage on the roll. I think that all works. So now I've got to put these in the right places. Joy. Even better. Even better. For now, oh, I've, I've booked it, chat. I've booked it. There we go. See, change the threshold. And then short trapped ramp. See the fall of the intrusive. I need to name those traps below, don't I? Uh, the trapped entry door is the price of knowledge. See the price of knowledge. I'll be going for another half hour or so. I think. Uh, see the th thieves' misfortune. The long walk. There we go. If Twitch could stop updating the hosting list and catching my attention and making me feel like something is moving in chat, that would be grand. Uh, this is the nightmare. So the idea being I'll proof all of this and then I'll like off, off stream, obviously, I'll proof all of it, um, move everything around to where it needs to be, and give like each room will have name of the room, the box text describing it, traps, treasure, anything else in the room.
one has two simple traps so it was uh, it was Galvanic Gift, Dragon Fear Blades. And then, then the first complex trap uh, I need to name. Um, Bogus Bane. Sure, that works, I guess. And then I need to did I name these. I did not name these. I didn't even get rid of these. Uh, so that one is Withering Touch. And uh, what would this be called? Oh dear. Um, Hmm. Hoard, treasure, coins, bolus, stunning, spinning. Protector of the Horde. Almost put the wrong Horde there as well, so that would have been embarrassing. Uh, simple and complex trap. See, withering touch, and see so if I get the right horde. Nailed it. And then that was the. Um, I can get rid of this title now. That is not needed anymore. Uh, protection of the gods. There we go. See protection of the gods. Close bracket. And then pr probably name these. Uh, communication RA. I mean, total eclipse is a bit cheesy. Um, I just got misalignment of the planets. That is literally what it is. Misalignment of the planets. Um, final bonds. Uh, so there's the traps. So Here we go. See misalignment of the planets and final bonds. So that's the traps sorted. Right, so uh, bold, underlined, red, inhabitants. The engineers' forces. Uh, I think I've mentioned in a few where there are, um, in a few of the right, a few of the rooms where there are, yeah. Um, each room has a. Um, wait, no. Ah, oh, uh, how, how to phrase this, how to phrase this, how to phrase this. Um, uh, 
all constructs within the labyrinth of gears. Use the, just grab the monster manual from behind me. Sorry about that. Just kind of frantically flick through the monster manual. Yep, that's what I was thinking it would say. Animated armor. Yeah, we'll choose the animated armor. Use the animated armor stat block found in the monster manual. Um, in brackets, if powered. Because by default they are unpowered, the players may find a way to power them. Uh, the more dwarf-like constructs I put the hyphen in the wrong place. Why did you not tell me, chat? More dwarf-like constructs. Um, gain an additional plus one AC, plus 10 hit points, and uh, da, plus one to their attack and damage rolls. So that's something that I'll just go through and clarify what constructs are in which room um, when I go through and do the rooms. My voice, what? Right, so a monster I've not yet used. Well, first of all, I need to put another title in. Uh, subtitle, sorry. Wrong kind of title. The Engineer's Forces. Clan of the Shiniest Scale. Uh, these are kobolds. Um, the kobolds within the labyrinth of gears are split roughly into um, yeah, 40, 40, 20, Males, females, children. Into a roughly, into a 40, 40, 20, males, females, children uh, ratio with a scale sorcerer uh, leading them and Continuously misspell sorcerer for some reason. I just can't. I just can't. Like, if I think about it, I realize that it, it's 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 a one o word, and there are two e's. But sometimes, for no reason, as you saw just now, I put a second o in. Uh, and five. Uh, I said fellows. I think they're just called tinkerers, but it's probably worth checking. Kobold Inventor. Uh, and five. Inventors acting as lieutenants. Um, each kobold Benefits from an improved stat block to be determined. Uh, because this is 
an eighth level dungeon rather than a, a lower level dungeon because kobolds are challenge rating a quarter or less. So uh, each kobold benefits from an improved stat block. And should ideally, uh, and each group should ideally outnumber the player characters two to one. Uh, X. Including the sorcerer or the inventors. Uh, female, uh, children, obviously, I'm going to fight with males and females who fight to defend their home, their home. Uh, many. Passages, ex made tunnels even. Made tunnels exist which allow them safe passage to other rooms in the labyrinth. It's not really a labyrinth, we'll call it the Path of Gears. I called it Labyrinth of Gears because it was cool and evocative, but it's not really. Uh, after thinking it through, Clearly, it's not a labyrinth anymore. Um, okay, so that doesn't work. So I'll have to go through and change all references of labyrinth to path. Like this one. Uh, safe passage to other rooms in the path of gears. Um... Providing a quick escape route and a way of resetting traps behind the player characters. So if they come back through, they'll just trigger all the traps again. If any of the kobolds are, are left. Um, kobolds also breed rust monsters. Which is a monster I've never used before, um, so that'll be interesting. What is the combat rating, the challenge rating of a rust monster? One half. Uh, that's obviously going to be improved. Benefiting from an improved stat block. Uh, we'll go with... Four of which are in, what did I call it? I think I just called it animal pen. Side chamber. Four of which are in the ground floor side chamber. And we'll say there are five rust monster nymphs. Um, TBD, because I have to create them. Although I could just use the normal stat block, to be fair. Yeah, I'll just do that. Using the normal cuts down and work for me. Rust monster stat block. Uh, within... What did I call it? What did I call it? Cobalt living error. There we go. Uh, within the cobalt living area, functioning as pets. Uh, so I think that's it. I need to figure out treasure, but that's something I need to do off, off stream. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So what time is it? Uh, Quickly load up Steam, see if I've got anything I can play real real quick for you. I also need to figure out kind of not treasure, but like the items scattered throughout the dungeon that tell the story or hint at the story, I should say. Uh, 
But I'm happy with what. Oh, that's not my stream password. Because I can play till I can stream till four. So ideally, I won't be playing anything that I generally record for YouTube because that just seems pointless to have a 45 minute video. Oh, hey, I should probably accept that friend request. Uh, accept. There we go. Uh, what do I have that I don't record? That I could f feasibly finish in time. That also is enjoyable to watch. It's kind of narrowing down the uh, list considerably. Uh... Right, I have something in mind. So, anyway. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, YouTube for now. Thank you for watching. This has been Behind the Screen and Path of Gears. I have been Comrade Bubbles. I don't know why people say I have been. Um, I am Comrade Bubbles. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, obviously, these dungeon, these workshop streams and these Dungeons & Dragons streams don't do that well at the minute for whatever reason. Um in terms of audience, so I might scale back on them and slow down until I have uh, A, a bigger community who is more interested in this kind of thing, uh, and B, until I like I need to do the prep. So this I'm going to use in my games, for example. Uh, so when I need to do something like that, or if I don't have any content for my website that I need to generate, um, like I did a few weeks ago with, was it uh, Dewhurst and Bleakburn? um for, for locations probably do things like that but it won't be every week uh so if you are particularly attached to the recap um i'm sorry uh but i do i, I have to take a step back from what i want to do and figure out the best way of developing this community developing the stream and and you know becoming somewhat successful at doing this because i just want to entertain people and right now, this isn't entertaining people. People aren't tuning in for this. So um, I've got to take a step back from it, unfortunately. But I, I appreciate you watching it. And if you do ever have a topic you want me to discuss uh, or whatever, please do leave a comment on the video. Um, I do check the comments when there are them, where there are comments. And uh, feedback is important. I can't grow the stream. I can't develop or grow as a streamer without your feedback. Uh, so please do, if you have anything if you want to let me know, please do tell me. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. Um, my streaming schedule is, is the same this week, and then I'll figure out what I can do on Mondays from now on. That'll be my time at Porsche, or um, just like the main game I'm playing throughout the week anyway. So uh, I guess for now, that's, that's it. Um, YouTube, thank you for watching.